something about the body we found in the shower room. Oh, I'm just waiting to see if I am alive or not. Um, I don't know if I am or not. Okay, cool. We are live. Awesome. Hello, everybody, and welcome to more Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors. I'm Gina, a.k.a. The Gina Chu. We about to finish this ish tonight. I'm very excited. We might jump into the second game, too, if we have enough time. I don't know. <coughs> we'll see how it goes, but I am so excited because this has been a long journey. We about to finally find out all the answers to all of our questions. So, my, my, um... My aunt's, my uh, thoughts right now that we have going on is, and uh, we were talking about this earlier in the Discord. I was talking about this with Shelties and Shay. Um, either Santa or June, I think, is zero at this point, and they're definitely working together. So whichever one isn't zero, like one of them is zero, the other one's helping them out, I think. And I think June is Santa's sister, and I think she pulled some kind of time travel bullshit because they were saying that like the, transmitting you know thoughts over these invisible fields that they needed to have an element of danger to it so i guarantee you that like she was so petrified in that incineration chamber that she like threw herself through time that's gonna be like or teleported or some shit i don't know i have no idea what's going on but we're gonna find out so we're talking about the body we found in the shower room. it had to be nijisaki correct dressed up to look like snake it was nijisaki dressed up to look like snake what definitely come on man what kind of detective are you you didn't figure that out already oh, jesus he barely even remembered that he was a detective but no um in that one uh ending where we caught ace as the killer we saw the picture of that guy, and it was Nijisaki, like, yeah. Hey, you know go easy on me, man. I just got my memory back, Really? Right? Got me some slack. Poor Seven. Hmm. Well, if he is, the three murders make sense then, don't they? Yeah, that's right. Murder. Kubota blew himself up, but that was murder too. So why did these murders take place? Vengeance. I mean, if you think about it, pretty much everybody at this point is connected, right? If you go through numbers one through nine, like, first of all, everybody on the ship, like, the captain, that was one of the guys that ran the experiment. The, uh, fake snake was definitely the Nijisaki guy. He was also part of it. Number one is Ace. He was, he was the head of the company. Number two is Snake. He was part of the experiment. Number three is Santa. He was part of the experiment. Number four is Clover. She was part of the experiment. Number five is us. We're June's best friend. And June's definitely involved in this. Number six is June. She was part of the experiment. Seven is seven. He's the detective. Eight is Lotus. Her daughters were part of the experiment. And nine was another one of the board members that died so everybody here is related to what happened nine years ago in some way shape or form if junpei is correct and the body in the shower room was nijisaki's ah uh, i am that means all of the people who were murdered were involved with the creation of the nonary project correct kubota the person who conducted the actual experiments nijisaki hongo's assistant musashido the man who financed the project Yes. You mean this was all just revenge? Yep. Santa is zero. He's getting revenge for the death of his sister. Oh yeah, except he doesn't know his sister's right next to him. Maybe, maybe she is working towards the same goal, but he doesn't know it? That's why he killed them. No, I, I don't think Santa actually murdered anyone. No, I think he just set it if up. If I'm right, then it's not hard to figure out who the next victim's gonna be, is it? Thanks. I'm pretty sure I don't have to tell you. Yes. Yep. Right. The next target will be Gintaro Hongo. Yes. The person who planned the Nonary Project. In other words, Ace. Ace. Yep. He's probably dead already. What? On his own shit. Uh oh. What the hell's going on here? It must be 6 a.m. Our time is up. Uh oh. Shit. Come on. We need to get out of here. How? I'm betting this sucker opens the exit. Come on, let's go. Okay, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. We gonna die. Oh shit. Key card zero. Oh. <laughs> That's very cute, key card zero. All right. Let's just swipe this card. Excellent. Junpei, look, it's unlocked. Yeah, now we can go back to the library. Hurry up Junpei, we don't have time, let's go. 
Agreed. Let's go. And we found our way out of yet another room. Woo yeah, we found it. No thanks to me being way too tired and huh. confusing things in I my think head. The shaking stopped. I think it it has. would seem so. But we are yet to be out of danger. Oh sure. You're right. Let's hurry. Oh, I got a I got an achievement. I didn't see what that said. This exit needs the Uranus card too. Is there a way that I can look at Hey, Junpei. Oh. Yeah, I know. Here we go. Yeah. All right. Card. It's open. Let's Let's go. Okay, Neptune Key. Let's see if you work. Yes. Good. Oh, I think it unlocked. Nice. Neptune door. Here's the incinerator. Incinerator. So this is the incinerator. This is the first time I've seen it from this side, but yeah. I think so. Then there ought to be a lever near the door. Yeah, right here. Pull that and the door should open. Got it. Let's go. <gasps> what the hell is going on? Oh god, what happened? Okay, Jude is like probably on her deathbed because I think this is another part of Jude's problem too is that she's dying. And Santa's doubled over. What's wrong? Are you okay? Did Ace escape? Jumpy, you came to get me. Of course I did. I made a promise. I'm so glad you're here. So glad. Hey, what happened to you? I'm fine. I just fainted. I wasn't feeling very good. I'm feeling a lot better now. Okay. Are you sure? Are we sure? I have no fucking clue if I'm sure yes. or not. I just need to rest a little longer. I'm, I'm sure I'll be fine. You shouldn't worry about me. Santa. Hey, where is it? Where's the gun? You hide it somewhere? I don't have it. I got sucker punched and they took the gun. Ace and, um, and Lotus. What? Who took it? Did Ace take Lotus with him by gunpoint again? What? Isn't that obvious? I took the gun. Yep. Yep. Called it. Ace. <laughs> Ace, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> poor Lotus can't win in any of these playthroughs. This poor woman. Hey, Metax. Just what the hell do you think you're doing, Ace? <laughs> Hello. Or maybe I ought to say Gintaru Hongo, CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. Yeah, we know your secret. You have me at a disadvantage, and I don't like that. Yeah. You know me, but I don't know you. Do you have any idea how much I've suffered? Can you even begin to understand oh, my pain? Oh, what? Bullshit. The pain of prosopagnosia, right? <laughs> Another irritating insect. And how do you know that? Hmm? Good question. No matter. If you don't want to answer, it makes no difference oh, to Oh, no, me. it's because you thought you killed Snake, but you This didn't. is a waste of time, anyway. It's time for me to go. First is what? Give me your hand. Uh. Eight. And with this... Nine. Eight was nine. Right, he took the ninth man. The ninth man. man. Kubota's bracelet. Yeah, he took Kubota's bracelet. I believe I've won this game. I've had quite a time playing with you. I must thank Zero, I suppose. Wait, what? Ace doesn't know who Zero is. Uh, uh, what the hell are you planning, Santa? At any rate, this game ends now. I will escape, and the rest of you will have a slightly less pleasant ending. I suggest you enjoy your final moments. Goodbye. Wait! What? Why isn't it opening? Because the nine isn't actually an eye. <sighs> One more time. <laughs> oh! Now open! <laughs> the 
no. nine isn't actually what a nine. It's a six. What? The digital root should be nine. It has to be nine. It's a six, then bitch. Why? why isn't it opening? Now. Yeah, get him, seven. No. Do it. Do it. Ugh. <laughs> oh, that was close. Too close. Thank you, Seven. Don't mention it. Just one punch ain't enough for this piece of shit. Really? After what he did nine years ago, I ought to rip him to pieces. But if a suspect can't talk, they ain't much good. Once he's locked up in a cell, we're gonna have a little chat. Yeah! Uh, nine years ago? Uh, uh, then you must be... Yeah. You finally figured it out, dumbass. Oh. <sighs> Ace, you killed Kubota, Nijisaki, and Musashido, didn't you? Yep. Wait, Nijisaki? Oh, right. You don't know yet. Yeah. All right. We'll just go through them in order then. Let's start off with Kubota. Yes. You talked to Kubota and managed to convince him to go into door five alone. Correct. You killed him without making it look like you killed him. The way I figure it, you had four motives. One. In the Nonary game, the number nine is dangerous. Whoever had the nine bracelet could join whatever team they wanted. Right. Adding nine to any number doesn't change the digital root, which means that number nine could do whatever they wanted. You wanted to remove that threat as soon as possible, too. We knew that. We know that for sure because you the wanted other the number nine bracelet for yourself, so that you could make use of its power. In fact, you did use it in the murder of Niji Saki. Three. Yep. Even if his number hadn't been nine, Kubota was a problem. He knew your past. He knew what had happened nine years before. You needed to silence him before he told anyone. Four. But last, and perhaps the most disturbing, you used Kubota as a test. You wanted to know how serious this <laughs> nonary game was. Was it truly life or death or simply a harmless prank? You convinced him to break the rules so you could see what would happen. That was why you killed Kubota. But he was only the first. Next Correct. was Nijisaki. While everyone was off looking for the missing parts for the Reds, you ran into Nijisaki near the big hospital room. However, because of your prosopagnosia, you didn't realize he was Nijisaki. Chiefly because, when you met him, he was dressed like Snake. That was why you thought Nijisaki was Snake. Who dressed him up that way, though? No, that, that's I not- I Zero, I suppose. That was Nijisaki? Why? How did- I'll get to that. Anyway, you thought he was Snake. Snake was one of the kids in your experiment nine years ago. You remembered him because he was the blind kid. But his presence made you think. Snake was one of my subjects nine years ago. He probably hates me. But if that's true, why isn't he saying anything? Is he keeping quiet because he can't see? Or perhaps he's working with Zero to get revenge on me. Whatever the reason, anyone who knows my past is a threat. Correct. Before he tries anything, I need to get rid of him. Yes. That was when you decided you had to kill him. The murder weapon was Kubota's bracelet. Hold on a second. Sorry about that. You just waved it over the red. Verified your own number and then grabbed Nijisaki's arm and forced it over the scanner panel. Then, when the door opened, you kicked him in. Right. Nine seconds later, the door closed. So Zero just put a bomb in him so that he And then could also 81 kill seconds Nijisaki. passed. And poor Nijisaki was dead. And you mean to say. Snake is still alive? Yep! Sorry to disappoint you, but I'm as good as new. <laughs> Thank you for killing the wrong man. But I can't say I like knowing that you wanted me dead. Although, to be honest, even if you hadn't tried to kill me, I would still hate you very much. Well, yeah, I mean... Well, I wouldn't blame you. 
Last but not least, let's Wait, talk about Musa Shido's so death. So, if he remembered him as the blind kid, then he, that accident had to have happened before the experiment. So I guess he did actually lose his sight and his arm in an accident and not in the experiment. When Clover and I were investigating the chart room, you came over to talk to me. Do you right. remember what you said? Oh, a pocket watch. Might I take a look at it? I handed it to you, and you left the room. You had been in charge of the Nonary Project. Of course you would have known the solution to every puzzle. Which right. would mean that you also knew how to get out of the wheelhouse. All you had to do was place the watch in the indentation on the door to unlock it. With the door open, you could enter the captain's quarters. Musashido was there. Oh, that's how the- that's how he got killed! Conveniently placed next to him was an axe that practically begged you to kill him with it. You picked up that axe and buried the blade deep in the other man's chest. One blow was all it took, and then you returned to the chart room as if nothing had happened. There was, there was something, something, I something I wanted, I wanted to, speak to speak with you about, about Junpei. Junpei. Could you, Could you come, come with me for a moment? I had no reason to say no, so I followed you to the wheelhouse. When we stepped inside, remember how you slipped your hand into my vest? You pulled out a piece of paper, the one I used to cheat during the vote. But that wasn't really what you were after. Your true purpose had been to slip the watch into my pocket. It wasn't a very good plan. Had way too many holes, and someone saying the wrong thing could have brought it all down around you. You must have been desperate. But what made you willing to risk it all to do it? Ace. Musashido's murder is the only one I don't understand. You obviously did it. But why? Because of this. What's with the paper? Just read it. Huh. Let's see. Number one. There are two ways you might survive this ordeal. The first is to win the nonary game. The second is for you to confess your sins of nine years past. I have prepared a camera in the captain's quarters. The images captured by that camera will be streamed through a satellite and distributed across the world. Simply look into the camera and repent. Once you have confessed everything, I will release you from this ship. To make your confession more credible, I have left you a witness in the captain's quarters. Perhaps he will confess with you. The decision is yours. Do as you please. Zero. Hmm. When I awoke in that room on D-Deck, I found that in my pocket. Hmm. That was why I chose door one when we voted. Right. If I went through that door, I knew I could get to the captain's quarters. As you said, I knew how to enter the wheelhouse. My plan was to find the pocket watch before anyone else. If I could, then my alibi would be set. At least, that was the plan. Unfortunately for me, you got to it first. Yep. That sleight of hand was the best I could manage on short notice. Tough titties, bitch. You meant to kill him from the beginning, then? <laughs> uh, Musashido, I mean. You had no... You had, you, you had no desire to I only knew Musashido was the witness after I reached the captain's quarters. I asked him, and he answered. He seemed groggy. Perhaps he had only just awoken from sedation. I suppose Nijisaki was in much the same state. Yeah. He seemed confused and disoriented when I encountered him. Yeah, he looked a little weird. <sighs> but yes, you are correct. I intended to kill him from the beginning, even though I didn't know who he was. I proceeded to the captain's quarters in order to remove this so-called witness. <sighs> Ace, y you figured it out, haven't you? You were being manipulated. Yes, so it would seem. Yep. It was little more than a puppet, in many ways. Everywhere I went, Everything was already prepared. Just like you did to those kids nine years ago. The reds in the large hospital room were dismantled. Nijisaki was dressed like Snake. There was an axe in the captain's quarters. Musashido was delirious from the anesthetic, so he couldn't fight back. Yep. Nijisaki as well. In retrospect, I can't understand how I could have fallen into such a simple trap. But yes, yes. This was a trap. Well, yeah, they kidnapped it you. It was Zero's trap. And I fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. I did everything he wanted me to do. All of us yeah. did, kinda. By manipulating you, Zero was able to kill three people and keep the blood off his own hands. All of this was revenge for what happened nine years ago. That's why this nonary game happened. 
Am I right, Santa? Huh? What the hell are you talking about? Uh oh. I don't know any. Ain't no point trying to play dumb anymore, Santa. Actually, I guess I should call you Aoi Kurashiki, huh? My memory came back to me, kid. You're Aoi Kurashiki, no doubt about it. Never thought I'd be back in this room talking to you. <sighs> but hey, I guess this was all part of your plan, right? Uh, maybe June is zero. After all, the person who planned the notary game this time around was Zero. And Zero's you. <laughs> Looks like you really do have your memories back, huh? He is Zero! Well, I guess there's no point in hiding it then, huh? Yeah, you got me. I'm Aoi Kurishiki. But I was zero? one of the kids in the nonary game nine years ago. I made it out. So did Snake over there. But there's one thing... No, I, I guess there's two things you got he's wrong. He's not Zero. Number one, I ain't Zero. It's gotta be June then. What? Wait, what? Sure, I was helping Zero out, but I'm really more of an... Yes! Like a secretary. June is Zero and he was helping her, I'm telling you! But an assistant's only an assistant. I didn't come up with all this. All I did was follow Zero's orders. Then, if you're not Zero, who is? It's June! Calm down there, Junpei. <laughs> didn't I say two things? You made one more mistake. Junpei, you just said... All of this was revenge for what happened nine years ago. That's why this nonary game happened. But that's not it. Revenge isn't the only purpose. Really? There's another reason you guys were playing the nonary game. <sighs> to save someone. Save someone? June, because she's dying. Right. You were brought here to help my sister. To save Akane. What the hell are you talking about? Akane Kurashiki died nine years ago in this room. Nope, she's I was June. there. I saw... Uh, what? What the hell? Where's... Where is she? Where's Akane Kurashiki? Oh, my head! Oh, my head, it feels like it's gonna pop! What's going on? Seven! What the hell is going on? I don't know. I don't know, I just... Oh, I swear to God, my head feels like it's about to explode! Oh my god! What was the Nonary Project? I'm sure you know already, but I'll tell you one more time. Maybe June's doing something to his head, psychically. It was a project designed to test a particular phenomenon. And what was that phenomenon? For two organisms to communicate with one another in the absence of physical contact. The morphogenetic field theory. Right. Could human beings use these invisible fields to exchange information? That was what this experiment was conducted to determine. <sighs> There were two separate locations. One was the Gigantic, and the other was a building in Nevada called Building Q. The nine children trapped in Building Q were faced with numerous puzzles, copies of identical ones on the Gigantic. Right. They were told to send their answers into the morphic field set and transmit them to their brothers and sisters on the Gigantic. Right. <sighs> we know the this. transmitters were put in Building Q, and the receivers were put on the Gigantic. Right. Each sibling pair was supposed to be split up, but Right, but that was my question, is how did you wind up with your sister on the fucking ship then? But there was a mistake. Akane was a transmitter. Uh. She should have been in Building Q. However, for some reason, she was placed on the Gigantic with the receivers, like me. Perhaps she was mistaken for someone who was supposed to be in Group A. Whatever the case, Akane ended up on the Gigantic. <sighs> so clerical error? That's a little I hard I think to I've told you enough. You get it, don't you? I'm pretty sure you know where this is going, Junpei. Yep. Where what is going? June is zero! Don't play dumb. You know things you shouldn't. Things you couldn't. How did you know Ace had prosopagnosia? How did you know why Ace wanted to kill Kubota and how Nijisaki was killed? Were you surprised when you found out Ace was Hongo? And what about the coffin Snake was trapped in? How the hell did you open it? Well, that's... He knew because I knew. Junpei was receiving information that I sent to him through the morphic field set. It's simple, really. How do I know the alternate futures then? Imagine a river that splits in two like an upside down Y. The river flows from the top to the bottom from a single stream into two branches. It only flows in one direction. It can never flow backward. Information is the same way. It moves from the past to the future but never flows backward. That's why people at the river source in the past will never know about these downstream in the future. But the people downstream will never know about one another either. 
information only flows along the path of the river. But I am different. I can manipulate the morphic field set to pluck knowledge from the future. I know what happens on either fork of the river, even though the people on either fork know nothing about one another. Now, who am I? I am I, the ninth letter of the alphabet, but I am also zero. No, that's not true. I'm not really zero, not yet. Perhaps you could say I am less than zero. Zero is my future. In nine years, I will be zero. Wait, so he's getting messages from June from the past? June, no, Akane. Where did you go? Santa! Why is Clover... Oh, shit. Freeze. Ooh, yeah, Santa still got the gun. Or he picked it up. Yeah, while well, we weren't watching because Ace took it. Looks like he's turned the tables on Ace, though. Wonder how he likes having a gun to his head. Get up. What did you miss, Shelties? So, okay, so... You know how the story went. We confronted Ace with all of his bullshit, and he admitted to it. He tried to get through the ninth door into the incinerator with, um... With Lotus and the ninth man's, um wristband. However, we know that the the ninth man's wristband's actually a six just flipped because uh, June's was actually a nine just flipped. So he couldn't get in. And when he couldn't get in, uh, Seven tackled him and took him down. And we're like, Santa, we know this is all your fault. You did this. You're Ali Kurashika, whatever his fucking name was. We're like, we know that you did this. And he was like, well... I'll admit it, I was here nine years ago, but I'm not Zero. I'm just Zero's assistant. I'm just helping Zero out. You should know who Zero is by this point, Junpei. So, it's definitely, definitely June. I'm sure he's about to take that gun off him for a minute, is he? Nope. Ace isn't putting up any kind of fight. I mean, I don't think I would either, but he just looks drained. I guess he's going for the door, huh? He doesn't need to verify to go through that door, but... Hey, what's your plan, Santa? What are you doing? He can't get through any number doors with just two people. What the hell is he thinking? Didn't I tell you? I'm Santa Claus. It's time for me to go make a wish come true. That's it? That's all he's gonna give us? What the hell does that even mean? Shit, they're out... And now the gate's shut. Looks like the rest of us are stuck in here. They're all looking at me. At least Seven's headache is gone. He seems to be all right. Well, I guess there's no harm in trying. Let's see if this door still opens. No. Damn. Well, it looks like this door isn't opening anytime soon. Oh, you mean we're trapped? So it would seem. Oh, Santa, what is your plan here? What the hell is Santa trying to do? Oh my gosh. All right, so there's five of us. And so let's see, seven. Plus Clover is 11, plus Lotus is 19, plus us is 24, plus Snake is 26. So that I don't know if we can get out. Oh my gosh, what? Have you considered where we are? Yeah. There can really only be one thing Santa would do He's now. He's gonna fucking burn us all to death. No. No, you can't be serious. Oh, but he is. Shit, we've got to do something. Now, I don't know if he means to kill us or if he's trying to push us to that point of danger where we do something with those invisible fields. There's the red. Yeah, all right, we can do this. I've just got to... No, it's not going to work. There's no way. The five of us can't open this door. Yes. I just did that math. Mm -hmm. Is there any combination that'll work? Junpei, can I borrow your pen and notebook? Yeah, she's going for it. Sure, why not? I don't think we're gonna need them ever again. <laughs> she certainly looks purposeful. Looks like she's writing equations. A lot of them. I mean, she doesn't look very happy. What? Hey, you don't need to be ripping pages out like that. Jeez. What the hell are you doing, Clover? Give me that! Alright, at least Seven got it away from her. Maybe now I can get a look at what she was writing. Let's see. Yeah, she was writing combinations. <sighs> We'd be leaving Lotus behind. <gasps> what? And there's no other way? Lotus. Looks like she figured it out, though. Man, this is just too cool. It's okay. Go. Lotus. Don't you dare kill off Lotus, game! I love her too much! Come on, you know we can't do that. Oh, don't give me that. 
I'm sure you'd love to get rid of me. Yeah, we, we were definitely on the money with the idea of June being zero, I think. God damn it, you idiot! Oh, what the hell did that come from? Looks like she expected that about as much as I did. Without... Uh, if you're not... Look, it'd be bad, all right? For a cop, she doesn't have much confidence. Bad? Uh, yeah. Uh, if there weren't assholes like you around, I'd be out of a job. Seven, do you have a little bit of a crush on Lotus? Uh-huh. Seven. Look, I'm just not leaving you behind, all right? End of story. Seven! <gasps> Seven, you little dork. Do you, do, you, do you have a little bit of a crushy crush on Lotus? Seven. Seven. He's right. I'm not leaving you either. Well, Me too. Leave you, you didn't honestly think I'd abandon you, did you? Uh, you're all idiots. Act as tough as you want, Lotus. We can all see you're about to cry. That being said, be however... However... I doubt we would be able to open the door anyway, even if we were to leave Lotus behind. Huh? Why? I trust you remember what happened to Ace? I couldn't, uh, see exactly what happened, but... I was able to guess what he was attempting to do earlier, at the Red. Yes. Oh, yeah. No! What is this? Why? The digital route should be nine! It has to be nine! Nope, because it's a six. Then why? Why isn't it opening? Just to see. Why don't we give it a shot? Give it a shot? Yes, that is what I said. Is it just gonna let them all out anyway? Two plus four. Oh. Oh. You were right. It ain't opening. But it did open nine years ago. The digital route was nine then, I'm sure of it. You think maybe they changed the settings? Perhaps. Shit, if we can't get through the door, we can't get out. The walls are way too high. There's no way in hell we could get that hole seven popped out of nine years ago. All we could do is stand here and stare at this door with a nine on it. I guess this is it. This is the end. And this, I believe, is the point where the coffin ending ends. Also, thank you for saying Akane Vision, because that kind of spoils the entire damn thing if you didn't get it, but yes. But anyway, um, I'm pretty sure that's where the coffin ending ends, is it's just you uh, die. Um, Alright, so I was watching. I had watched everything that was reflected in his eyes. I was listening. Every sound that vibrated in his eardrums, I heard. Smell, taste, touch, I felt everything he felt. I knew. I knew everything about him. What was he thinking? What was he feeling? What was he sensing? All of his feelings and worries and fears became mine. My mind, my consciousness was inside of him. Through the morphic field set, we were resonant, and we were as one. I was him, and at the same time, I was an observer. It started with a tremendous noise, like a clap of thunder. That was approximately nine hours ago. A bomb had gone off on the ship we were Yes! That was when my resonance with him began. My resonance event melted into him and we became one, inside of Junpei. Somehow I found myself in Junpei's mind, nine years in the future. But I didn't lose myself. I was living in two realities at once. One was the present and the other was the future. Perhaps you can think of it as two movies showing on the same screen at the same time. Yeah. It's a little weird. Eventually, it becomes difficult to separate them and determine which movie is which. However, if I concentrated, I was able to focus on one or the other. That was why I was able to grasp what was happening in front of me. Come on, over here! So she's also a child nine years ago, and then also in Junpei's mind nine years in the future? That was my brother, Aoi. He was yelling. I followed him. Around me were seven other children. That looks like one of um, Lotus's daughters, for sure. The other one has to be in building Q, so. They all looked like they were about my age. Come on, hurry up! Oh, is that? That's Clover! Oh, uh, no, Clover's in the other room. I'm so confused. My brain. We ran down a long street hallway and burst into the large hospital. arguing. Two of the boys got in a fist fight. 
girls watching them began to cry. I want to go home, she cried. I want to go home. Another girl slapped the crying girl and glared down at her. It has been two hours since the notary game began. We were starting to fall apart. But just when all hope seemed lost, light started talking. He was blind. Nine years later, we would call him Snake. Hello? Everyone? Could you come over here for a moment? He was older than most of us, and his voice had authority and dignity. The fights died down, and we gathered around. I have a little sister. She is very important to me. Right now, she is over in Building Q, and is desperately trying to send information over to me. Her name is Clover, and today is her ninth birthday. Are we really getting this deep into the number nine? As he spoke, he pulled something from his pocket. Ah, the clovers. In his hand were nine four-leaf clovers. I was going to give these to her as a birthday present. I was outside picking them when I was abducted. So this explains why the four-leaf clover thing pertains to the experiment. I'm sure I've already told you, but I am blind. For a man who can't see, collecting nine of a very specific plant is... Well, it is difficult. But my sister means a great deal to me. And I hope that these would show her how much I cared for her. Since it's her ninth birthday, I thought nine four-leaf clovers would be appropriate. Every one of you has a brother or a sister in Building Q with Clover. For their sake, we have to survive. We have to get off this ship. Do you understand? Snake is the best character, Shelties. He's like the greatest. We're going to do that. There are three things you have to remember. We okay. need trust and love, yep. and we have to have faith in one another. If we can take all three of those to heart, then I promise that good luck will come our way. And this is how uh, Santa knew to tell the Four Leaf Clover book. Did you of... know that the yeah. leaves on the Four Leaf Clover mean faith, trust, love, and luck? Those words are leaf words. So if you believe what I've told you, and you understand, then I want you each to have one of these. They're a promise between friends. He gave a clover to each of us. I took one too. Eventually he was left with only a single four-leaf clover. He had one last thing to say. Don't ever forget. So long as you have that, we will always be connected. Do you understand? When he finished, the tension of only a few minutes before was gone. We were calm. that, we ran around the ship for a while longer and opened several of the numbered doors until we finally found a door with the number 9 on it. In fact, there were two doors with 9 on them when we found them in the chapel. We spent two groups walked through the doors and everybody got out. The end. <coughs> Except the ninth man died in our situation and therefore that shit sucked. The end. Before long, we found ourselves in a room with a ceiling that looked like an upside down funnel. For some reason, this room had another number nine, but this time there was only one. But if there was only one door, then only five people could escape. What are we gonna do? There aren't any other doors! We began to panic. Then, as if things had not gotten bad enough already. Warning. Warning. Emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. Automatic incineration will take place in. Evacuate the incinerator immediately. Repeat, emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. What? What's happening? What did that thing say? That didn't sound good. My brother, I already swallowed hard and answered. I think it means this room is gonna burn. Burn! The plaque on the door says incinerator, and that voice said that the incineration is about to start. And incinerate means to burn. Terror filled the room as everyone began to scream and cry. Every pair of eyes were filled with despair. Then, yeah, Seven appeared! He was a huge, frightening mountain of a man as large as a bear. Nine years later, we would call him Don't Seven. worry, kids. I'm not your enemy. I'm one of the good guys. So, I'll, I'll, I've, I've been told, although I haven't looked into this and I'm not sure, that the second game in the series is about this project. But I don't see how that's possible because pretty much everything relevant is being told at this point. And I say pretty much because I'm sure that there's other things that could be relevant, but... I'm a detective. So I'm here weird. to rescue you. Okay. The 
rest happened just like Seven had said it did. Four of us who'd stayed behind were saved by Seven. We crawled through the vent uh, away from the incinerator and slid down into the hall. We came out on the other side of the door nine. On the wall opposite the door was a set of double doors. We went through those and began to run up the spiral stairs. Correct. As we ran, I led the way. Behind me were Nona, my brother Aoi, Snake, and Seven. The other children, the ones who had gone through door nine before us, went up ahead. Uh, I could hear them cheering each other on. We ran and ran and ran. We left across as many stairs as we kept running. The stairs spiraled upwards like a tornado. Eventually, I pulled ahead of the rest. Perhaps Nona had slowed them down. I didn't want to lose them, so I slowed down as well. I didn't stop, but I glanced over my shoulder from time to time to see if they'd caught up. That was when I realized... Oh no! Where is it? Did I drop Jumpy's present? I knew I'd had it with me when we passed through the vent. Then I dropped it as we slid out. I had to go back. I had to. You, you had something to give to Junpei, so you ran back to go risk your. What kind of dumb shit are you? You can stop me. I'm sure of that. I didn't stop to think. I simply moved. I ran to the central hall, the room that connected to all the other areas of the ship. See, but I don't understand this. If her and Junpei were such good friends, how did he not know she had a brother? I'm, I'm still really confused on that point. I hid in the shadows, and moments later, I felt a rush of wind as they ran past me up the staircase. I waited until they were out of sight, and then I ran. I moved as quietly as I could, down and down and down. Finally, I reached the bottom deck. I ran into the hallway and looked around for it. There it is! Was it the clover? It was just where I thought it would be, sitting under the opening of the vent. I ran over and snatched it from the floor, but as I ran back towards the stairs of freedom... <clears throat> Ace... And then everything changed when the Hongo nation attacked. It was, <laughs> it was Hongo. Get to know Hongo. Nine years later, we would call him Ah, oh, how wonderful to see you decided to come back. His smile made my blood run cold. It, he took, it looked mechanical as if someone had simply pulled up the corners of his come mouth. Come with me. We must continue the experiment. I shook my head, eyes wide. Slowly I began to walk backwards. One step, two steps, three steps. Then I spun around and broke into a run. I felt Hongo's hand close over my left wrist. I said, come with me. There was an edge of insanity to his voice now. I pulled as hard as I could. No, stop! Let go of me! Let go! I didn't know you had a brother, Shelties. No, but it's like, listen, like, it's one thing, but like, if they were such best friends, he had to have known that she at least had a brother. But I still, but I was still an, only a child. I was no match for a man like Stop Hongo. struggling, goddammit! Do as I tell you! He heaved on my arm, trying to pull me into the incinerator. I screamed. Help me! Somebody help me! Then suddenly... Akane! The door to the stairs flew open. My brother Ayoi burst out of it. Behind him, he was seven to sneak. Akane! He cried my name again as he leapt towards Hongo. You came back! I cried out. But ah, then... You're too late, idiot! Hongo threw his full weight against my arm, pulling us both into the incinerator. Ah! The force of it threw me to the floor. I scrambled to my feet and looked towards the open number nine door. Hongo stood between it and me, but behind him I could see my brother, his fists clenched. Those fists never reached Hongo. With the cold, heartless screech of men metal on metal, the door slammed shut. Hongo glanced at me mechanically, his face registering that there was an object there, but not anything he would consider a human being. Well, that wasn't because he's deranged, that's because he can't see what your fucking face looks like. Then he turned away and walked to the red that sat next to the door. He reached into his pocket and removed two bracelets. Of course, we had to bolt those to the scanner panel. Two askers appeared on the red. He checked the screen, then tossed the bracelets carelessly onto the floor. What was he doing? What was the point? He made no effort to explain himself, of course. He said nothing at all and walked past me as though I were nothing more than a rock by the roadside. A few moments later... Two of the doors slid shut as well. Frantically, faintly, I could hear someone pounding on the door behind me. I turned around and ran towards the door with the nine. Akane! Akane! Are you okay? 
I can hear a voice from the other side of the door. A worried, a worried, frightened voice. Help me! My throat was already raw, but I screamed as loud as I could. My voice echoed lonely around the empty room. What should I do? I, I think I'm trapped in here. Where's Hongo? He went out the other door. W what? And it started again. Warning. Warning. Emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. Incineration will begin in... Now it's June Pet. 18 minutes. Please evacuate the incinerator immediately. Holy shit! Man, I knew what it was gonna say, but that is one hell of a creepy voice! I knew it! Uh, it's starting. Santa started the incinerator. Shay? Oh god. Alright, I'll have to explain this again. Alright, so, what did you miss? You missed a lot of shit. Okay, so, we got out of that room with all the broken puzzle pieces, and ran here and got to the incinerator room. Uh, we found June laying on the floor sick, and we found Santa doubled over, and we were like, what the fuck happened? And Santa was like, Ace attacked me and got the gun, and then there was Ace, and he was holding the gun to... to Lotus's head, and we called him on all of his bullshit, and he admitted everything. Um, and then he, t he had the Nine Man's bracelet, and scanned his bracelet, and the Nine Man's bracelet, and Lotus's bracelet to get out through the Nine door in the incinerator, but it wouldn't let him out. And so when he was confused, Seven ran at him and tackled him to the ground, and knocked him out. And then we were like, Seven, what the fuck, dude? Why did you do this to us? We know you're Zero, and he's like, I'm not Zero, I'm just Zero's assistant, man. You were all just doing this for Zero, haven't you figured out who Zero is by now? And then we turned, and Akane was gone, well, yeah, June was gone, and now the June that was the, a little girl, nine years old, that was stuck in the incinerator, is now talking to Junpei in the future? Because apparently June from nine years ago and June now are the same person? And she's tr she's talking to Junpei now over those waves. Um, no, Santa. Santa is Zero's assistant. So I'm pretty sure that June is is Zero at this point, and Santa was just helping her. And I guess we're gonna use June's memories from nine years ago to get out of here. Is my assumption? Fuck! Man, I never thought I'd hear that damn voice again after nine yeah. years. I think we all figured it out probably earlier than we were supposed to. What the hell? What the hell? What in God's name are you talking about? It's nine years this and nine years that, and when it's not nine years something, then you're talking about some sort of fucking experiments. You uh, aren't making any sense. Uh, oh, yeah, and this, in this particular ending, she doesn't know what happened to her daughter. She just knows they disappeared. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lotus, but we really don't have time to explain it right now. I promise, I'll tell you everything once we get out of here. But... Incineration will begin in 17 minutes. Yeah. You know what that means, right? Incinerate means burn! Uh, what kind of idiot do you think I am? I know what incinerate means. Well... God damn it! Okay, okay, fine! I won't ask anything else. Talk about whatever you want. But you have to do something for me. Seven, figure this out. What? Why me? Just shut up and stop this thing! Oh, and also, like, uh, because they couldn't all get- the only combination for these five to get out through the nine door was to- for Lotus to stay behind, and she was willing to stay behind, and then Seven was like, No! I refuse to let you stay behind! And she was like, Why? What do you mean? And he's like, Because- Because- be, Because- Because- People like you, and we need people like you, and I'm not letting- I'm not leaving you behind- Seven definitely has a huge fucking crush on her. I'm calling it! I ship it! How the hell- There has to be some sort of emergency shut-off button! There isn't anything like that. How the hell do you know? Because I looked for it nine years ago. That's right. Yeah, Lotus isn't happy about that answer. Can't really blame her. No, you didn't see the scene, Shay. You did not see the scene. He's definitely interested in her. I'm calling it. The floor is moving. What the fuck? Whoa! Whoa, guy! Wow, whoa, guy. Well, he can feel around. 
What else can I say about it, but... What the hell is that? What the fuck? <gasps> what is oh, that? Oh, she saw this, too. Oh, what? what else could I say? The floor opened and the machine rose up out of it. It looked like a computer. Maybe this is how she survived? Did she survive? It looked like a computer, at least it kind of did. There was a monitor, a keyboard, and a cross-shaped device of some kind. Something about the machine scared me, but I forced myself to walk up to it. I was terrified. Tears poured down my face. I wiped them off even as more took their place and forced myself forward. Finally, I reached it. I looked at the screen. Maybe she's going to give him the answer. It was blank. All I saw was my own frightened face staring back at me from the glass, drenched in tears. There you go. There's June sobbing. Enjoy, Shay. <laughs> All I could see on the screen is a reflection of my own face. I'm looking kind of freaked out. I know I'm sweating like crazy, but seeing it kind of drives it home. Okay, Junpei, just calm down, all right? Everything's going to be okay. Oh, man, I wish that thing would just shut up. Incineration will begin in... Yeah, his own thoughts are getting mingled with whatever little girl June from nine years ago was sending him. Fifteen minutes. All right, back to this thing. It was only showing up now that it's got to be important. But what the hell am I supposed to do with it? Seek a way hey, out, move. buddy. Oh, yeah, that's right. She's the computer whiz. Hey, we're all tense, lady. It doesn't mean you get to shove people okay, around. it's turned on. There's nothing on the screen, though. Oh, this is bad. This is really bad. If there's nothing on here, how are we supposed to do anything with it? Sure, I'll just push buttons. I'm sure that'll... <laughs> Excuse me, what? Well, at least it's on now. What's on the screen, though? What is this? What's up? It looks like some sort of puzzle. It's got a bunch of numbers and letters scattered across a 5x5 five five grid. The numbers range from 1 Do to 8. Do you think eight. that if we solve this puzzle, the incinerator will stop? Yeah. Well, we can hope, right? All right, puzzle. How do you work? Oh man, that goddamn voice again. Incineration will begin in thirteen minutes. Shit, thirteen minutes. Can we really do this? My heart feels like it's gonna pop. My heart was pounding like it was about to explode. I started the puzzle on the screen. I was sure I had to solve it somehow, but I had no idea how. You know what I'm thinking? Maybe the June here as an adult isn't actually real. Like, maybe the reason why she keeps disappearing is because she's having problems. I don't know. Anyway, um, I know my connection to Jumpy had been gone for a while. His mind was gone. I couldn't get any more information from him. Without the second surprise, I stared at the screen completely lost. Oh, she's not giving him answers. She's reaching into the future to, for him to get the answer so she can save her child self. Oh, uh, what? Then I heard a voice. Hey, what are you doing? It was muffled. I turned around. Pressed against the window in the entry door was a face, a frightening evil face. Jesus Christ, Ace! How long did he been watching oh, me? Don't know what to do. He was yelling, but his voice was still muffled. It's simple, really. But I suppose I might as well tell you. Just solve the puzzle on that machine. <laughs> and she can't because he doesn't understand this experiment won't work for her because her sibling is on the ship with her he's not in building Q she's supposed to be in building Q Hugh's laugh was muffled by the door but it still tore at my heart like the claws of a vicious monster I bit my lip and glared at Hongo struggling to hold back hot tears you're a terrible person I hate you oh my how could you call a gentleman such as myself a terrible person? That's not very nice. Oh, fuck you, I'm quite buddy. fair. I don't use tricks or play dirty. You see? I've even left you a way out. A way out? Didn't you hear me? All you have to do is solve that puzzle. Do that, and you can stop the incinerator. Okay. What's the point of stopping it? You'll only capture me and make me do this all again. I'm not going to listen to you. If you're just going to throw me back in here, I might as well just die now. My goodness, haven't you listened to anything I've said? 
I told you, I'm a fair man. Huh? If you solve the puzzle, the verification function of the red will in turn activate. Ah. If this experiment is to deliver valid results, there must be a chance of success. If you succeed, you will escape. The verification function of the red will activate? No, but if he knew that, then why would he try to swipe his way out in the future? The verification function of the red? Did I remember? Oh! Right, he already scanned ah, two of them so in. Oh, you do remember. Right now, there okay, are two numbers in the red. Now. The first is one, and the second is three. Say, Akane, what's your number? Look down at my left hand. Let me guess, a five, yep. Of course, Junpei got her old number. I grabbed the red and put my hand against the scanner panel. You really aren't one for listening, are you? I heard Hongo's muffled voice from across the room. I've already told you, didn't I? Once you solve the puzzle, the verification function of the red will activate. In other words, if you haven't solved the puzzle, you can't enter your number. What kind of fool are you? Why? Why are you doing this? <laughs> you could never understand. You don't know what it's like to spend every day surrounded by monkeys. Please. Now start the experiment! Solve the puzzle! I can't! I don't know how! Of course you don't! Isn't that the point? You understand, don't you? Access the morphogenetic field and find the solution! I can't! Then you'll die. You'll burn alive. <laughs> Jesus Christ! It's gonna be quite hot in there in a few minutes! I imagine it will be very painful. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> his horrible laugh echoed across the room, and even after his face disappeared from the window, I could hear it. Incineration will begin in 10 minutes. I was crying, great gulping sobs broken by hiccups that shook my body. I was terrified. I could feel my fear pressing down on me like a tremendous weight. Somehow I forced my shaking legs to carry me back to the device. I stared at the mom. I can't. I just can't. There's no. Th there's no way. I can't figure this out. What was I going to do? I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't even know where to start. Fear scattered through my thoughts, and all I could think of was how I was going to die. My palms were sweating. Knees weak. Arms are heavy. Vomits on my sweater already. Mom's spaghetti. And my blood was boiling in my veins. It was hot. So hot. I couldn't breathe. I felt dizzy. My heart roared in my chest as if it would pound itself into pieces. I reached into my pocket. I wrapped my hand around the thing I'd come back to get. The doll Jumpy had given me. At least I had that. I held the die with both hands and prayed. Help me! Jumpy! Help me! Help me! Help me! Jumpy! 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 Please! Help me! So she prayed to the doll so hard she contacted Junpei nine years in the future? Jumpy! Akane? Akane? Who the hell is Akane? Shut up! Just shut the hell up! Seven and Lotus don't understand. I think Clover and Snake have an idea, though. Clover's looking at me, and I think Snake may have figured it out. No, it doesn't matter. They're in my way. Where'd she go? Maybe over here? Akane! Akane! Can you hear me? Akane! Say something! Fuck! Did something break our connection? I swear I just heard her. Akane! Answer me! Akane! Jumpy! I spun around. I heard a voice. His voice. I looked around. He wasn't in the room, of course. But I'd heard it so clearly. Like he was right there. Jumpy! I screamed as loud as I could. Akane! Jumpy! That's her! She's there! Then that means... Akane! Akane! Are you in an incinerator right now? Yes, I am! How? How did you know? I couldn't believe that he knew that. 
Now I understand what Santa right. meant. There's only one way to help her. You were brought here to help my sister. To save Akane. I think I get it now. Incineration will begin in... Seven minutes. Chubby, we don't have time! As quickly as I could, I told him that I had to solve the puzzle in order to stop the incinerator. Got it! And I do. I get everything now. I'm, I'm glad you do! At least I finally understand what all this means. I know why the Notary game is held today. I know why we were kidnapped and brought here. It was all for this moment. All of this was planned out to lead to this one moment. Oh my god, this is... This is insane! I can't believe it, but there's only one possible answer. June is zero! Yes! She recreated the history of the future that she had a glimpse of nine years ago. She tried to save herself that way nine years ago. Now she's trying to save herself right now. Correct! That means there's only one thing for me to do. Even if this is all some sort of insane plan, I will save her. I will save Akane Kurashiki. I must save her no matter what! Incineration will begin in... Six the, minutes. The time travel thing is, is killing me a little bit here. The voice reminded me of how much time I had Jumpy! left. Yeah, I know. Just hang on, all right? I promise I'll get you out of there. I'm not gonna let you die. I promise. So don't worry, all right? Just give me a few minutes, okay? Okay. My voice shook as I answered. It was hot in the room. It felt like my heart was on fire. Six minutes or not, my heart burned with my feelings for it. Oh, please. You're like a child. All right, time to get to work, Junpei. Is they talking to me about something? Whatever, it doesn't matter. He's probably filling them all in on what's going on. Get out hey, of my way! Why you... Just trust me, okay? Sorry, Lotus, I didn't mean to snap, but there's a lot more at stake here than your pride. I'll apologize later, alright? Let's have a look at this thing. We've got numbers all over this grid. It looks like the one can't move. These panels are out of order. <sighs> Just think of what I did all those times before. I'm gonna save here. Because I have a feeling I know what's happening. I'm gonna do this on my own, with my own mind. I'm gonna solve this problem. With my own mind. When I press the hint, numbers appeared in the empty spots on the grid. They're all single digits. I the feeling the numbers change when I switch out the yellow squares. The square at the bottom, why does it say blank when I press hint? Which one? Oh, this one? special meaning to there being two modes. What can it mean? Again, this is another puzzle that you need the dual screens for, and they put it behind a hit button. That's not what you fucking do with games like this. Jesus Christ. What? 
I've run out of pages in my notebook. The fuck. Nani the fuck. <laughs> um... Wait, so... 14... Plus 26... That's 40... And then... 30 is 50... So that one should be a 5! I don't understand what this means. I'm really lost on this. The hint displays with the adjacent yellow. What do you mean adjacent? Like up, down, left, right? Because this is not right then. Hold on. because it's not adding up because 8 plus 6 is 14 right so p is 25 which is, which is 39 and then s is 28 so that's 17 5 3 4 5 6 7 plus 6 is 30. okay so it is it's the digital root okay to make sure they all always add up, that will take me hours to math out. This will literally take me hours. This, this will literally take me hours to math out. It's fucking Sudoku. The last game, the last puzzle in this game fucking Sudoku. It's the most pants on head retarded game of Sudoku I've ever seen in my life. And the only thing that I have here is that this one. Right. So this is just telling me what the digital roots are without me having to math it out. Which is a little helpful. Um... So we need to figure out how to change this. Alright, so if we want these to be nines, we need to replace this with a four. But I don't have a movable four piece. So that means I have to change this P to something first. Mama Shelties, I know what needs to happen. I've officially figured this puzzle out. The question is, is how do I make it happen? <laughs> it's gonna take me some time to math it out. Because every time I move a piece, it changes all the other numbers because everything that's surrounded it comes out with a digital root. So I need to find some way to manipulate things without changing the numbers. And finding that combination is gonna take a while. Um... This might take the rest of the stream. Uh... Right, that makes those eight and these four.
six. So the nine is three, one. See, so like if I switch this out, like if I put the six here, then I have to switch this number, which means I have to switch these numbers to make sure they make nine. And I assume that nine is the number we want to go for, but it might not be. I might still actually have to figure out which number we can actually get all of them to be with this combination that we have. So nine might not even be the number that I'm going for, which is the other really frustrating part, is I don't even know what number I'm trying to change all these to, although I think it's a safe assumption that it's nine. Except rather than making sure that every um, that uh, every row and column doesn't repeat a number, it's making sure that every row and column gives every other square the same digital root. It's basically a different version of Sudoku. Um. It's hard because I don't even know which number I'm trying to make with all of this. I feel like this is a terrible puzzle. Like, this is a really shitty puzzle. I know what the end result has to be, but there are so many, I would dare to say at least thousands, if not tens of thousands of combinations. And that's assuming that the numbers that all of these are supposed to be making is nine, which it could be any number. So I, I to figure it out is gonna take me forever because every time you change something, it changes everything else. Like, I could do that, but then that changes this. So what is P? P is 25, so it basically amounts to a seven. I would need to, I need to either put a 4 there or a D there. I do have a D. So I can get that 9, but then we're missing shit here. Okay, but then this backs off this 9. So I can put a 9 
find here. Or fourteen. So I could either put a five or an E there. I do have a five. But now that changes that away from a nine to a six. See, this is the problem that we're gonna be having. Well, you know how to make the puzzle for the answer because you're probably looking it up. I'm gonna have to look up the answer. I know what I'm supposed to do, but to, to put it all together, is going to take me way longer than we have on stream. Oh God. There is no way that you could just look at this and know the answer. You have to start swapping shit around and you have to find some way to figure out which number is actually possible to make. It might not be nine. I assume it's nine because nines have been the thing, but I have no other, I have no other reason to believe it's nine otherwise.
are you guys screaming about? You you can't be screaming at me like that, guys. Please. You guys are usually way more respectful than this. I don't know what's gotten into you guys tonight. ending and I was correct. The ending, the, the correct answer is to spell out the word password. Except it's not working and I don't know what. How? I just did that exact thing. <laughs> I just did that exact thing. Obviously not the password. I did. I just looked at this walkthrough. The bottom column must spell password. Any combination of letters mixed in with the word password will put nines on the... the all you're supposed to do is spell password on the bottom. That's all you're supposed to do is just spell the word password. And the password is just the number nine. Which I, I yes, just guessed that off the top of my head. What else are you going to put in there but the number nine? Connie, did you get it? Yes, I did. I sold it. I mean, really, you sold it for me, but I copied everything you did. What a stupid did. puzzle. Oh, I see, I see what you're saying, Mama Shelties. You're saying I should have done it without moving anything else. And another dumb thing was that there was eight, there was eight, there was eight digits to type in that password. And the password was literally just the number nine. You don't do that. You don't give people eight slots and say, here's your password. You have eight things you can input and then make it just the number nine. And from what I've seen here, okay, I was correct. Yeah, it looks like it looks like most people guessed just putting in the number nine, just like I did. And yeah, apparently the original version of this game on the DS had a very different puzzle at the end game that they said was really intuitive and smart. And it seems like everyone agrees that this puzzle is a bunch of bullshit. It's it, for puzzle solving. It's not smart because when you when, okay, so game design 101. When you're creating a a a challenge for a game player to overcome, you don't ever want to give them something that will purposely mislead them. Um, it's okay to say. Okay, here's this puzzle. You need to put eight things in a specific order and then give them more than eight things and then have them realize that they don't need everything you gave them. It's not okay to say, here's an eight-digit password. Lol, sorry, it's actually only a one-digit password. It's the number nine. You have no way to know that except brute forcing and guessing. And we've completely just... It, 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 that's not the way game design works. It's not the way game design works. Whenever you go to put in a password, the first thing you do is go, how many spaces do I have? That's the first question you always ask yourself. Oh no, correct Zaf. It is smarter to make a more secure lock because people wouldn't think that. When you go to put in a password, you go, how many spaces do I have to put in this password? And you go, okay, it has to be this many digits. So you can't give somebody an eight digit password input and have the answer just be the number nine. That's really poor game design. 
really poor game design. And when our friend Chronic Death, who's playing this game now, when he gets to this puzzle, I guarantee you he's going to break something in anger. He's gonna be so pissed. Now I just have to press enter. Jesus Christ. What the hell are you waiting for? Push it. It would be too easy if there were only one space. So the answer is you don't make the answer the number nine. Or you make it four digits and have them have to spell out N-I-N-E. But you, but, but you don't make it eight when it's only a one digit code. Okay, I will. You just, you come up with a different solution. You could make the answer nonary, you could make the answer nine, N-I-N-E. You could make the answer so many other things. Emergency shutdown command has been confirmed. You could also, you know, give an actual hint as to what the password is. Incineration system has been disabled. It was a terrible Sudoku puzzle, Rie. It was a terrible, uninspired bullshit puzzle and I'm very disappointed in you game you've shown us that you are better than this and I'm very upset with you man game made a huge misstep in the end it was so good up until now get Final Fantasy I'm getting the fucking uh, Mass Effect jumpy. 3 flashbacks again it worked it worked the incinerator shut down nice. it worked we saved Akane from 9 years ago woo Tears rolled down my face as I cried out to him, but they were very different sort of tears. Yeah, Rie, it was a much different puzzle on the DS. A wonderful feeling of accomplishment and relief flooded my body. At the same time, what strength I'd had left disappeared and I collapsed to the floor. Really? You had to tilt the 3DS? That's fucking crazy. For a while, I just lay there laughing and crying and enjoying being alive. Every time I thought about him, I thought my heart would burst. Whew. It was bullshit, in my opinion, Shay. It wasn't even that it was hard or difficult. It was just bullshit. I can't quite believe I did that. But I'm so glad. So glad. I feel like my heart's on fire. No, I don't have time to be thinking about that kind of shit. I need to Akane, tell Akane. Sorry, but things are kind of busy over here. I'm gonna have to hang up now, okay? Hang up! Oh, of course! That's fine! I wiped the tears from my eyes and nodded vigorously, even though I knew he couldn't see me. Then I looked over to the corner of the floor. There were the two bracelets Hongo had left behind. Now. Well, Seven and Lotus don't look particularly happy with me. Not a very nice look to give someone who just saved your lives, guys. Junpei, are you... Okay? Ah, shut it. Right. Okay, so maybe they have a reason to be pissed off. So what if I haven't pressed the enter key yet? Jesus Christ, you pay! Wait. Incineration will begin in 90 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound like it's stopping. Oh my god! <sighs> What the shit? Why isn't it stopping? Okay, maybe I didn't hit the key hard enough. Yeah, just bang on the key again. It'll work eventually. Do you know what the definition of insanity is, Junpei? Okay, uh, just hit it again, and again, and again. Okay, that's not working either. The alarm's still going off. What the hell is going on? I've got all the right numbers in the right boxes. It's perfect. So why the fuck isn't this thing stopping? Incineration will begin in 60 seconds. This is not the coffin ending. The coffin ending is the only one we didn't get. The coffin ending literally ends when you walk into this room, I think. And it assumes that you went in here and couldn't figure out the puzzle and died. It's the same thing as this ending, just with extra scenes added on. So I didn't do the coffin ending. Because the coffin, we're going to see everything that the coffin ending has to offer here in the true ending. So it was kind of a waste of time stream-wise. What the fuck is going on? Hold on a second. Oh, Jesus. Of course! That's what the numbers that showed up after the puzzle mean. 
2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 7 plus 8. Snake, Clover, me, 7, and Lotus. Then, door 9. No, that's it. The number on the door isn't a 9. It's not even a number. It is hidden, but an exit can be found. Mm. Seek a way out. Seek a door that... Holy shit, of course. But we just have to put the right number into the red as... The animation will begin in 30 seconds. Run, guys! Get to the door! Run! Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit! Don't have much time! And I sure hope they can just trust me on this one or we were all fucked! Alright, no time to explain, just Quick, go! Verify your numbers on the red! Verify? Who? What combination? All of us! We all need to verify! Why? You really think this is a good time to ask questions? Just really? You have 30 seconds left! Hurry, hurry, hurry! Jesus Christ! Nine, eight, seven, six, five. Four, three, two. Central gate has been opened. Incineration system has been disabled. Dear God! Thank fucking Christ. No, no, time to be happy. Time to Hurry! go. Hurry! We've only got nine seconds before the door closes. Go, go, go! Come on, guys, move it! Okay, they're all through. Move it, Junpei. In time. Alright, now we gotta find- Now we gotta find the dead! Where's the dead? Where's the dead? And there goes the door. Don't calm down yet, you're not done. We still gotta find the dead. Oh, there it is. Alright, cool. Looks like we made it, huh? <laughs> Man, that guy sure can laugh when he wants to. Looks like Clover and Lotus are totally out of energy. Sink like is shaking his head wearily. I just want to take a Akane? nap. But... Akane! Can you hear me? Akane! I want to tell her we made it. I want to tell her how good I feel, but nothing. I hope she's smart enough to grab the other bracelets. Sitting in front of it was my brother. Akane! Oi! I cried in his name even though my voice was almost gone from screaming and I leapt into his arm. Oh, Aoi! <sighs> Akane! I buried my face in his chest and cried again. I cried and cried and cried. We've changed the past thanks to the future! The past, talk to the future, and the future it changed the past. Yeah, I don't know, Shelties. Is, is he gonna fucking explode? That'd be fucking hilarious, actually. The steady thump of his heart in my ear made me feel like I was home. It would be almost like a lullaby. I wrapped my arms around him as far as they would go and held him as tight as I could. Just to be there felt like a miracle. Oh god, look! Look at her wrist! Look at her wrist! The wrist! She's got the fucking skull! Oh, she better grab those bracelets! The moment I passed through the door, my bracelets had begun to count. Okay, she did take them. Okay. I walked away from him and looked around. The door had already closed. I spotted the dead only a short distance away. It took me only a moment to get to and scan all the bracelets. I left them when Tongo dropped on the scanner panel. That was it. deep breath and looked around again. The huge detective who we called Seven in nine years and Snake, the blind boy, were looking at me. They seemed to have been utterly stunned by my sudden appearance. Their eyes were wide and their mouths hung All open. Right, let's get out of here. If we don't book it, we might run into Hongo again. I know he was right. It's time we got moving. The mention of Hongo seemed to jar Seven and Snake out of their surprise and they nodded. We took off running, so up the spiling stairs to freedom. We're running, all right, here we go. But if they can get us out of here, no wonder we're running so hard. My heart's beating so hard, I can barely hear. I can't wait to breathe 
real air again. Seven talking. Hey, Junpei, can I ask you something? <laughs> What's up? That door. The one with the nine on it. Why did it open? That's a good question. Yeah, all five of us verified our numbers on the red. Two plus four plus five plus seven plus eight is twenty-six. That makes our digital root eight. It shouldn't have opened. <laughs> That's not like you, Lotus. I thought you would have figured it out already. Uh, what? Huh? Why? Because you were the person who taught me about the idea of bases. Bases? Yeah. What are the two numbers in base two? Zero and one. How about base ten? Nine. That goes from zero to nine, right? Then how about base sixteen? Zero through F. After nine, it starts at A and goes from there. B, C, D, etc. Right. You're right. In other words, A in base 16 is 10 in base 10. B is 11, C is 12, D right. is 13, and so on. So, what about it? You don't get it? What if we keep going with that pattern? What if you go way past base 16 all the way to base 27? Base 27? That's R. Base 27? Yeah. Well, the numerical digits are the same. So, I guess you'd add alphabetical digits. E is 14, F is 15, G is 16. Right. H is 17, I is 18, J is 19. K is 20, L is 21, M is 22. N is 23, O is 24, P is 25. Yeah, and? What comes after that? Uh, Q. Hmm. Uh, oh. Q. 26! And what right. does that mean? The Wasn't door was a nine actually on the door. eight. It was a Q. A fucking lowercase Q. Ah, which means, right, which Q is 26, which is actually an yep, eight. that's pretty much it. I guess to put it another way. But, here's again my other question. How did Ace not know that? You could say that it was a nine in base 10, but a Q in base 27. Unless zero somehow changed it. And I still don't really know who Zero is because I have no we have no definitive proof yet that June is Zero. God, my face. Although I think it, I think she is. I swear to God, now I'm gonna tear a muscle. I feel like every single cell in my body is dying from air. Every time I take it to shore now, I feel like my lungs are gonna burst. Maybe it's just a short rest. I can't stop going to time. Come on, legs. I can't be many more of these steps left. That's why I'm gonna like a bullet down the right foot barrel. Tornado coming through the sea of clouds. I feel like we're running along the back of a giant coiled dragon. Finally! <laughs> yeah, except we don't even know where June is or if she really exists. And there was no reason for her to recreate this whole boat thing just to save herself in the past. She could just talk to him. He's like, I barely breathe. No, Junpei, no time to rest. Pull yourself together. You're almost All right. there. All right, I'm going to open it. Yeah. Yes, we're finally here. Please do. Sure, you look like a big, heavy door, but you're the only thing standing between me and my freedom. But even more important than that, you're the only thing standing between me and Akane. Oh, you think so? You're going to open it. You're going to open now. <laughs> Oh God, sunlight! I felt the hand on my shoulder. It was I always. I gave it a small reassuring squeeze. I was so happy I felt like I could melt. My heart was at peace. And only because my brother and I were back together again. Thanks to the huge detective all nine of us who'd been kidnapped. Hey! We're finally able to escape from the gigantic. On the distant horizon, we can see the faint outline of the ship as it sank. It gave a thunderous roar as it finally slipped beneath the waves. His last cry echoed out across the ocean. And then it was gone. It's over. I already remembered. Yeah. It was over. It was finally over. Or was it? Or was it really? No, that was wrong. That wasn't it at all. It was short. This wasn't the end. It was only the beginning. It was only a problem to what would happen in nine years. And you knew that because you talked to people in nine years to save yourself. So wait, does that mean... Okay, so I think I get what happened. I think it is kind of a paradoxy kind of thing. Like, like Shelties was saying, it's like... 
it's a weird temporal loop thing. Like, Junpei saved her. So now she can grow up, become Zero, and put everybody through this nine years later so that Junpei would be in the position to help her out nine years ago so that she could be alive and come back in nine years to be Zero to set it up to save herself again? Is that, is that what's going on here? Damn, that sun is bright. I can barely see anything. Oh, I gotta admit, this doesn't look quite like... Wait. No way. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I think it's completely dumb. <laughs> that makes no sense. If Junpei didn't save her, how did she grow up to get Junpei to save her? That makes no sense. You've got to be shitting What? Me. It can't be. Oh my god, are we in building Q? Am I gonna this fucking is... laugh? What? We were in building Q! We building in the Nevada desert! We were in building Q the whole fucking time! You did not say anything like that, Shelties! The mock experiment building! Obviously! Oh this whole time we were in building Q. That's why that bottom level wasn't flooded when- Like, that's why E deck wasn't flooded when D deck was, because you weren't actually in water. Sure enough, there's a desert out there with mountains all around it. Hello there, sun. Boy, am I ever glad to see you. We are really. I don't think I've ever been so happy to see a sunrise. Huh? Did I just hear something fall? Oh, yep! Right, our bracelets. I guess I never really got a good look at the underside of one of these things. Let's see what's inside of you. That's a little electronic chip, like in an ATM card. That's it. There's nothing else. I have no- that's my other thought too, Shay, is that I don't understand why June as Zero would put June Pei through this and risk his life. Unless she just really believed in him. The bracelets do look cool. In fact, I didn't get a chance to do this because I wasn't sure how I was going to like it, but the third game, when, when if you pre-ordered the third game, it came with a replica of one of these bracelets, which is kind of fucking sweet. I feel like it even looks like a detonator. There was never a detonator to begin with. Literally, they were never in danger. Akane. And Akane wasn't real. Jumpy. I guess I must be pretty crazy about the girl if I think I'm hearing her voice in the wind. Is that it? God damn it! I'm gonna let the credits roll in case there's like a scene after the credits. Yeah, you could say it's the field, but then here's my question. Here's my question. Um, what did Alice have to do with anything? We never did find Alice. Okay, so that's question number one. Number two, does June really exist then? I mean, if she, if she got Junpei to save her, then she must now exist in the present? You know, people were complaining about the plot of this game, and I was like, oh, people just, don't, you know, just don't like complicated plots, but no, I think I, I think I get why people were pissed off at the plot of this game now. Like, if she survived, then she has to be out there somewhere. And if she's zero, yeah, but then where is she? Because she kept disappearing on the ship. Like, literally blinking out of existence. Yes, door number two. Um, but door number two has nothing to do with any of this. So the question is, where is June now? Was she actually on the ship? I don't think so, because if she was, then where is she now? Why didn't she come out with them? Are you oh, here we go. okay? 
Oh, come on. Uh, this is nothing. Really? Yeah. You don't look okay. It was just before the end of elementary school. Jumpy and I were sitting next to each other on a small hill looking down at the town as the sun slowly set. How does it look then? He was half serious and half joking. I thought about it for a minute first. Um, well, let's see. Junpei, what did you do? It looks like you kissed a toad and got warts, but then they just kept growing and growing and growing. <laughs> what does that even mean? Junpei <sighs> ow, 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 ow. See? I told you you're not okay. You're too reckless. You can't beat five eighth graders, Jumpy. That's crazy. Yeah, but I couldn't just stand there. I mean, don't you think so? I had to do something. The Nevada Desert Pope passed. For an SUV, this thing is a pretty smooth ride. She was nice of someone to leave it here for us outside the building. Keys of the ignition and gas in the tank. Thanks, Akane. Almost like it was a present, you know? Anyway, we jumped in and now here we are screaming across the desert. Lotus is over there in the passenger seat. Taking seven and I while squeezed into the backseat here. I still can't believe we let her drive. This is so fun! You what, Clover Drive? This is so awesome! Driving is so great when there's nothing around. And there's no speed limit. You know what? This is probably the most dangerous thing that y'all have experienced in this game. Hey, uh, Clover, <laughs> watch those pumps, all right? <laughs> this car jumps even a little, and I think I'm going to get crushed to death. Hey, shut it. I can't help if I'm big, all right? Suck it up. Also, there is Why Sokka. don't you drive, Seven? I'm a cop. I ain't going to break the law. He doesn't have an international license. Yeah, but you could have sat in the passenger seat. Oh, hell no. There's no way I'm giving this seat up. <clears throat> and Clover... There's no need to slow down. The car Santa and June are in should be somewhere down the road ahead of us. <laughs> ah! Yeah, I saw some I fresh tire tracks does actually out. exist. There's no doubt about it. I just don't know the time thing just makes no sense. Because here's the thing. If she died, then she must have done... Like, when she died, because we know that she did die. When she died in the incinerator, she must have been so scared that she flung herself into the future and then recreated this to save her past self. That's my assumption at this point. Then we've got to hurry if we want to catch them, don't we? Sure thing! Nice. Shit! Damn, she doesn't have to drive so fast. I think a car like this would go this fast. She's throwing up a lot of dust. after we run into the junior high students. They've been hiding in the bushes on the back of one of the hills, judging a kitten in gasoline. The moment we saw what they were doing, Jumpy ran up to the Hey! Place. What the hell are you doing? Then he jumped on them. He quickly scooped up the kitten and tossed it to me. I caught it and ran for the police station as fast as Help I could. Help me! Officer, Officer please! please you, you have to come, come with me! The policeman and I headed back to the hill. All we found was Jumpy sprawled on the ground with a face covered in big swelling lumps. You couldn't run away after you threw the kitty to me? I asked him. He stuck his tongue out through the hole in his mouth where a tooth had fallen out. Yeah, I, I guess I could have. Then why didn't you? I didn't want to. I wanted to beat him up. Beat him up real good. Because of what they were doing to the kitty. Yeah, that too. But I think they were the ones behind those murders our first semester. Remember? Oh. Bunnies. That's right, the bunnies that died! Yeah, the bunnies. He plucked some grass from the ground and tossed it into the They lake. asked me what elementary school I was from, so I told them. And then they said they'd do the same thing to you that they did to the rabbits. I couldn't forgive them for that, so I... Hey, uh, there's still some stuff I don't get. Some stuff! Of course, they probably don't really like, like Ace. Well, I guess I should say Guitaro Hongo. Why did he create the Nonary Project? Anybody? Any ideas? Why don't you ask him yourself? Yeah, I guess I could. He's still in the trunk, I assume? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! We really found the motherfucker after we ran all the way up and out and took him back to shove him in the trunk? 
That is fucking beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Still tied up, I'm assuming that his mouth tape shut. His eyes just look empty, no emotion. It looks like he's just given up. I wonder if he even cares what happens to him. Hey, before. were you listening to us? Yeah, go ahead and try to pretend you were, you old bastard. Let's get that tape off your mouth. Come on, I know you were. Answer me. At least look at me when you talk, man. I only wanted to see the faces. Human faces. He was hoping he could find someone that could send stuff through those waves so that he could see what faces look like. I thought... I thought if I could gain the ability to access the morphic field set, then perhaps I could see faces. By peering into people's minds, you could understand how they were processing the expressions of others. That's it? Yes. If you want to put it simply. You're a douchebag! But if you are looking for a more philosophical answer, I can supply that as well. I'm looking for an answer that isn't a load of bullshit. You see, the human collective consciousness... <laughs> I think that's enough out of you, pal. Time for the team to go back on. Alright, so what's your second question? You said there were some things you didn't get, didn't you? Well, somebody's a little bozo. Well, my next question doesn't really have anything to do with you two. This is for you, Seven. It's about the whole Alice thing. Yeah! What's the deal with that? Well? I don't know if wanting to see faces is a reason to change the entire... Like, change the entire direction of his company, get all these other people involved, kidnap children, and put them in death-defying situations. That is not a reason. You don't do that because you want to see faces. He's a fucking psychopath. So nine years ago, after I escaped from the Gigantic, I kept going after Hongo on my own. I catch him when he finally slipped up. And during the course of my investigations, I learned a lot more about the Gigantic. I also found out about Bourdain and Alice. You're not really answering my question. Was there actually a girl who wouldn't melt at room temperature? Mm. Ooh. Please. I don't let you talk, but you gotta behave. What? <laughs> Alice doesn't exist. No, I mean, that's uh, that's his motive, but it, that's not something a normal person does. What I'm saying is that he's still a fucking psychopath. Nine years ago. I found Alice's coffin behind the library on the bottom deck. There was nothing in it, but the root of a peculiar plant. My research determined that it was a member of the genus Mandragora, of the oh, family Solanaceae. Oh, you found the Mandragora plant. I was able to extract a particular alkaloid from it. And I that's what that made the sulfuril. Uh, its creation gotcha. was a tremendous boon to my firm, and we grew rapidly. Going back on, Hongo! That's my question's been waiting for. Now I think we'll just enjoy the ride. Here, uh, this is for you. The other endings I probably had after credit scenes too, and I feel dumb for not watching them. Um What's this? This is uh for you, doll. Uh his name is Junpei. Junpei pulled something out of his pocket and shoved out his arm towards me. And his hand was a doll made of yarn, so enough to fit in his mouth. Chumpy, are you sure it's, uh, for you, doll? Huh? Uh, yeah, the, the lady at the shop said so, so th that means it's for you, right? I, uh, are you sure it's not a voodoo doll? Wait, what? That, that's, oh man, oh man. <laughs> well, it sure looks like a voodoo doll. I mean, you do know what a voodoo doll is used for. Is that how she contacted him? Because she was holding the voodoo doll? Yeah, I, I guess calling it Junpei isn't a very good idea then. Actually, I have a feeling it's going to save her life. Why are you giving me this anyway? It just seems really sudden. Uh, well, um, you, you know how after June, um, we aren't going to get to see each other too much? I mean, we're going to be in different schools, and I just thought I'd, uh... You know, um... Oh, okay, well, how about we call it June, then? Okay. 
So uh, I wanted to give you this. <laughs> you sound like some sort of tribal chief in a bad movie. <laughs> uh, yes, I, head of tribe. This doll, traditional charm of tribe. <laughs> so I give this, it me. So we always together. Oh, Jumpy. If something bad, then hold and pray. I go wherever you are. So here, take. I reached my hand out and picked up the doll gently. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jumpy. Before I knew it, I was crying. Tears streamed down my face that fell onto June's tiny yarn body. Oh, Jumpy. I'll <laughs> never forget you. I promise. Jumpy looked straight into my eyes and just said five words. I'll never forget you either. The sky was a beautiful crimson red as it melted down towards the horizon. The last golden rays of sunlight stretched out across the city and painted themselves across the hills. We sat, bathed in the warm light of evening, just the two of us leaning gently against one another, shoulder to shoulder. The sun set and we still didn't leave. We watched in silence as the darkness deepened and one by one the lights of the town began to flicker on. She got to this point in the future to get him to save herself from cats. She probably, I don't know. Right, let's see, that makes some kind of insane sense. If I did that then, how do I make sense of what Seven remembers? Snake big sense, he's blind. He couldn't have seen her body anyway. Seven said he was sure he saw it. Historical discrepancy. Maybe that's not even wrong. There's one other logical explanation. You told me the truth, so it wasn't even really satisfying. No way. Hey, look! Over there! What? There's somebody next to the road! He couldn't what? He couldn't what? What? Game, you can't cut these thoughts off like this. Who was by the side of the road? It's Alice! June in the incinerator so she wouldn't melt. No. Don't tell me that's what happened. Don't give me this bullshit. The burning gaze of the Nevada sun pawned down on her head. The desert around her nipple with heat. Sitting there in that shimmering plane was a woman, her arm out and her thumb up. It would not be long before June could realize who she was. Don't forget your towel. Also, a skull sense of what's come a sixth sense of what's coming, I'm sorry. Would you like to save your playthrough? Yes. And it also triggered the coffin ending. We now have all the endings! Yes, Queen! We've done everything except go through the second door. Um so, here's the thing about that. I know! that I'm assuming that's what it was. I'm assuming that Alice, like, wrapped Clover up because she can't melt, I guess? I don't know. I don't know. I, it's either that, or she sent herself into the future with her powers somehow. I don't know. The, 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 the plot kind of ended a little weird, but... So we've got all the endings. We did everything but the second room. We could do the second room. Or we could start the second game. I feel like we should start the second game. Shay 
so suck at game. Shelties, Mama Shelties. Anybody else? Any other? Any other thoughts? Any other thoughts? Any other thoughts? What? 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 Is anything going on? What? Um. Did my alarm go off? Because I definitely didn't take my allergy pill. Alright, Mama Shelties, thanks for hanging out. More of what? Second game? Second game. Alright. Second game we shall do. Alright, so I'm going to end the stream here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it back up. And we're going to play... Uh, Virtue's Last Reward, which is the second version, uh, which is, I'm sorry, which is the second nonary game. And uh, we'll see how that goes. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, thumbs up, high five, all that good stuff. God damn it, game. I told you to shut your face. No, no, I'm going to stop the stream here. I'll turn it off and then I'll turn it back on after I set up for the second game. <laughs> Anyway, uh, come follow us on Twitch. Join us for a live stream sometime. Join us on our Facebook page. Join us on on our public Discord. Join us for all the things. This game series is crazy. The plot makes no sense. It's bananas. And I love every minute of it. So for those of you that are watching the stream live, I will be back in just a couple of minutes. I'm going to set up for the second game. And then we'll start Virtue's Last Reward. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you. You're beautiful. Goodbye, my love.